Hi and welcome to the video on acute inflammation. In this video we're going to discuss some of the tenets of acute inflammation. Now acute inflammation usually happens from minutes to hours to about three days. That's usually the classification of acute inflammation. And there's two tenets or two um, components of acute inflammation. You have vascular changes and you have cellular changes. And under vascular changes you have two important concepts. You have vasodilation as one and then as two you have an increase in vascular permeability. And what does that mean? Let's explain it. So the first one you have vascular dilatation. So if you have an artery here and you have arterioles, so you have an artery here and this is called an arteriole is a branch of a of an artery. And then on the other side you have you know the artery turning into a vein or a venule and then you have it have a vein. So this is a very basic diagram of a capillary. This is what a capillary looks like. So when they say you're you can see capillaries or when you get a bruise you damage these capillaries and then blood starts just leaking out all over here and these inside here are just cells these are just cells here here's the nuclei and what happens is let's just say here you have you have a bacteria here So you have a bacteria inside these cells and what's going to happen is you have these macrophages that are going to start attacking this, back, this bacteria to try to eliminate it. And what's going to happen is you, these, this is going to become vaso, the macrophage is going to send out little chemicals, little chemical signals here and then this um, arteriole is going to get a lot bigger. So the diameter here is going to increase. Why? So you can get more blood flow in here. So more blood. Because inside the blood you have the, all these inflammatory components and we're going to talk about those right now. So you want to get more blood to the area to help kind of control this situation. So you're going to have vasodilation. Also you're going to have increased vascular permeability. Well it doesn't do any good if you get more blood there but then the blood, the components of the blood um, like white blood cells other other um, components can't leak out so you're gonna have so you're gonna have these components start leaking out here and vas increased vascular permeability oh, Increased vascular permeability just means that there's more holes. Because, you know, on a very, very microscopic level, you know, if you blew up this part right here, you'd have just one, you know, cells like this. And they would make up a tube. They'd make up a tube here. And these cells kind of open up, if you will so there's bigger spaces between them so then now stuff can start leaking out because there's holes in between these cells that's what it cause that's what it's talking about the increased vascular permeability is you have more holes so stuff can kind of leak out into this tissue the surrounding tissue to help kind of control or um, you know destroy what's ever causing the invasion so that's that's the first step is vascular changes. The second is cellular changes. And the primary cellular event 
Let me scroll down here. This is actually not changes. This should be events. Because when you increase that vascular permeability and when you increase the vasodilation or you have vasodilation, you're going to have more neutrophils. The leukocytes are the primary cells that are going to respond to the, the emergency or area. And neutrophils are, are the main one. And they also have, they're also named poly morphonuclear leukocytes, that's also their name. But the neutrophils is just a cell type that's going to respond. It's going to be the first responder kind of to, to the scene and to the area. Now these, I've posted here a list of, you know, the reasons or causes of acute inflammation. We have infections, either bacterial, viral, fungal, parasitic. Now these are the most um, medically um, important, if you will. These are the, this is considered the, to be the most medically important type of in, inflammation is infections. Um, trauma, you have blunt and penetrating trauma. You have physical and chemical agents. Tissue necrosis due to ischemia. Remember, um, ischemia is the most common cause of tissue necrosis. Like if you have a heart attack um, or a lack of blood to an area, that's going to under that's going to cause tissue necrosis. You have immune reactions. You know, autoimmune allergies of any kind, and then foreign bodies. In the last video we talked about a splinter. That same, that's the foreign body. So these are some of the classifications of, of causes of inflammation. And I want to go back to the top here, and I want to talk more about uh, the vascular changes. So we're going to go over here and talk about vascular changes. And to talk about uh, vascular permeability and changes, uh, you know, I, I want to use this picture here. So this picture is taken from Basic Pathology Robbins, 8th edition. Kumar is, is the author. So you have the normal um, blood vessel is you have the plasma proteins and, and different structures inside the blood and you have these you know one cell thick uh, arterial walls and when you increase um, the blood or when you have vasodilation, when you have vasodilation here, what happens is you are increasing the hydrostatic pressure because there's tons of blood flow to the area. So there's a lot of water pressure. And the water pressure is driving fluid out, as you see here. Okay? And then what happens outside the cell is you have decreased col colloid osmotic pressure. And you have decreased protein because the, the ratio from normal proteins out here is decreased because then you're adding all this fluid to it. So you decrease the concentration outside. And then as you um, have increased vascular permeability, what happens is you see these cell, those gaps between these cells open up. What happens then, excuse me, is you have all of these proteins then start leaking out. This is called exudate and this is called transudate. So transudate usually doesn't have a lot of protein leaking out, just a lot of water, a lot of fluid. Exudate has a lot of fluid and a lot of protein. And this is called edema, swelling inside at the at the site of infection. Now, another important thing that 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 that's interesting, that's really tricky, that I th really clever actually, is that as these proteins start leaking out, what happens is you increase the concentration. Let me scroll down here. Concentration of red blood. 
as red of red blood cells. And this is concentration. This just means concentration. These brackets around it just means concentration. So you're increasing the concentration of red blood cell inside inside the vessel. So what happens is you increase the viscosity because you're because you're losing all these small proteins because they're kind of getting kicked out outside and they're they're going through these holes because the wall is more porous that you have an increase of red blood cells inside the vat inside the arteriole which is then causing an increased viscosity once you increase the viscosity of the blood then you have stasis which is a slowing down which is kind of a uh, the blood starts to pass really slowly through here you know before it was going pretty quick but now it's going really slow and then what that does is that allows for the leukocytes primarily the neutrophils so you have a cell here to kind of start hooking up or slowing down and tr and starting to move starting to move to the sides of the uh of the um, of the vessel walls that's called marginization Marge marginization marginization so these white blood cells are kind of moving to the side of the vessel wall so that then they can start exiting out so if you have a white blood cell or a neutrophil here it starts moving to the side because the fastest part of blood flow is right in the center and it kind of slows down once you get to the end to the closer to the vessel wall because there's more friction and that will slow that down that's a little you know physics i guess but then so you start getting these leukocytes that start coming to the side here and then as soon as they can see an out then they'll they'll jump out into this into the wall you know, out here in the extracellular matrix to help fight the bacteria so there's several mechanisms that cause this increased vascular permeability, this little hole here by which these um, you know, protein structures can leak out. Also, the fluid leaks out with that. And these are them. The first one is thought to be the most important and the most um, kind of uh, for first responder I guess and it usually lasts they say about 15 to 30 minutes but the cell itself these are called endothelial cells the cell itself contracts so it kind of like brings itself together it kind of contracts like a muscle cell and they'll kind of they'll kind of do that that's the first thing and it can't last it doesn't last last indefinitely but it, it's the first kind of initial a response to increase vascular permeability and make these holes a little bit bigger. The second one is cytoskeleton changes. Now, you know, you have a cell here. I've talked about this before, but the nucleus is here, and then you have these cytoskeleton or these uh, microfilaments that kind of come out and give the cell structure in a three dimensional way. As these microfilaments are kind of supporting this three dimensional structure of the cell, what happens is these cytoskeletons, uh, cytoskeleton changes occur. So, for example, like if this cell needs to shrink this way, then what will happen is this cytoskeleton, this filament right here, will kind of, will kind of shrink. This one will kind of shrink. This one will kind of shrink. You know, they'll kind of shrink down. And then what happens is the cell kind of will re rechange so you'll actually have you know kind of a smaller cell if you will and that happens you can imagine if this cell just did the adjacent cell did the same thing that this cell did well then now there would be now there would be a big hole right here where stuff could leak out and that's exactly what happens here another component is the leukocyte damage as leukocytes kind of exit these holes here now leukocytes in and of themselves when they react when they respond to this um, this kind of emergency if you will or they kind of respond to this situation they're they're leaking out all kinds of of chemicals 
they're leaking out all kinds of chemicals and they're kind of just, you know, big bad gnarly guys that are getting to this this situation. So they start leaking out chemicals here and this actually these chemicals actually can damage um these they can actually damage these these cells right here. And then also the more that these cells exit, you know, they're kind of squeezing through here, if you will, and that just the more that exit, it's just sheer repetition. There's, you know, in, there's a shear force that that's being exerted on these endothelial cells, and that can damage these cells too. So as the the more that they exit, the more damage they're doing to these, which will kind of like shrink these down and and damage these endothelial cells which then further promote the inflammation the inflammation process and these cytoskeleton changes i forgot kind of forgot to mention here is they're thought of to happen because of the tumor ne necrosis factor and the interleukin 1 um receptors and those receptors uh, kind of are responsible they think for this shrinkage of these cytoskeleton filaments to increase vascular permeability. Now one last comment about uh, vascular permeability and vasodilation is before we end this video um, is uh, the role of lymphatics. Let me uh, where can I go? Oh, let me just move down right here. Okay. So we'll do lymphatics in yellow. So right here we have, you know, we've kind of talked about using this picture that, you know, the the there's exudate that's coming out, you know, small proteins and fluid into this into this extracellular matrix. Now, how does all this stuff get out of here? How does all this stuff get back into the the veins to to continue in circulation? Well, there is the lymphatic system. Okay? So the lymphatic system, let's just say this yellow part right here, this lymphatic system runs adjacent to or parallel with the these vessels and these venules and these capillaries and it picks up it picks up all this stuff. Some of it, you know, most of it will return into the vein side of, of the capillary, but some of it will return into the lymph. And the lymph then is is a vessel that kind of helps drain uh, tissues too. And then during the path of the lymph, the lymph, um, the lymphatic system, you have lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are, you know, part of the immune system, and they have just they're saturated with lymph lymphocytes and and different things. But as this exudate, as this edema, is getting drained through the lymphatics, you can also kind of imagine that if there's an infection here, what will happen too is this infection will spread then down the lymphatic system. And if you have, let's say you're looking at somebody's arm here, and you have kind of a cut, and then you went to the doctor and you had stitches in the cut, well there'll be, if there's little red lines, you know, and if it's red and, and, and swollen, then they know that still there's an infection in there. And also these little red lines, they'll follow, it's been observed that they'll follow like this, and then that's a sign to the clinician that the lymphatic vessel is also ha is infected. And then if you feel a big nodule, like in your neck or you know, on your chest or something, under your arm. If you feel like a big nodule, well then usually that that is, is that's an inflammation of of a lymph node. And the, it's hypertrophied, I mean it's gotten bigger, and so you know that's also kind of an infection and the infection has spread. But that's just what I wanted to talk about is that, you know, how does this edema get removed? It's through the lymphatic system and it's through the veins um, on the on the venule side of capillaries. Alright, we'll see you in the next video.